Hello again, everyone. Today I am here to share my traveler's notebook that I am using for both, both vacation planning and plan to bring with me for journaling on my upcoming vacation. So I said I would hold telling you all where I'm going on vacation until I did this video and where I am going is Iceland. Um, if everything <laughs> turns out fine and COVID variants don't prevent me from going, that's the plan. So it will be sort of in the uh, shoulder season in the fall and it should be sort of like a natural day between day and night because it's so high up on the globe that in the winter you have uh, days where you hardly get any sunlight and then in the summer you have days where you hardly get any nighttime. So I have been once before and I only spent three days there but it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And it just has the most ama amazing scenery. And uh, my husband and I are going to rent a car and go um, to a variety of different places. We thought about doing the ring road, which would uh, go around the entire island. But uh, we, we decided that we didn't wanna be driving every single day that we were there. And we wanted to have more uh, downtime and more time to explore a certain area a little bit more. So we're basically staying a few days in each place that we're going. So I'll go ahead and show you this setup. So this is the same traveler's notebook that I have used in the past for traveling. I thought about mixing it up this time and using a different uh, notebook. I didn't consider a different size because I actually, this is a standard size or traveler's notebook size. Um, variety of brands call them different things. This is, or narrow, this will, is also called narrow. This is a chic sparrow. Um, I really like this for traveling because it's it's basically A5 size tall, so it gives you plenty of room from top to bottom, but it's not so big wide that you can't carry it around. And for some reason, it's slimmer profile helps that you can kind of put it down in a bag and do something like that with it. So I thought about using a different traveler's notebook from a different brand, uh, but I just was drawn to this one again, and I'll tell you why. So this is a Chic Sparrow, if I didn't mention that already, and this is the Hummingbird Leather in the uh, Mockingbird collection, which is now discontinued. But uh, some of the reasons why I like this is that this particular piece of leather does not scratch that much. And when it does scratch, it kind of blends in a little bit. Um, and it is, uh, I don't know if, I don't think it's waterproof, but it's water resistant and it's a little more durable than some of the other leathers. Uh, it's not as sensitive as say um, an Austin, AKA Darcy leather. So uh, that's nice about it. And uh, this particular piece is very nice and dark and it held up really well in my last vacation that I took it on. So I decided to do it again. This is probably a little shinier than it was when I got it because I have carried it around quite a bit. And uh, let's go ahead and get in here and I'll show you what I have in here. Let me see if I can back up just a little bit more. Ooh, I don't wanna back up too much, then you'll see the edge of my, you'll, uh, it'll be a Wizard of Oz moment while you were. <laughs> you'll see behind the curtain. But anyway, um, so it still has the original string on it. I have a couple of fountain pens here, which I will talk about here in a minute. But uh, basically I have some washi tape up here. I have a, a travel-related card here. Sometimes I'll put little bits of ephemera or something that I think I might want to put in my notebook. This notebook currently is totally empty, and this is what I plan to use for journaling when I'm actually on my trip. And uh, this, I don't know if it's currently available. I got this off of a shop on Etsy. Um, and this particular seller, who I'll link down below, doesn't always have notebooks available. And this is actually the uh, Tomoe River paper in the heavier, heavier uh, size or heavier uh, weight. And I really, really like this Art Deco type cover. It's really, really nice. Um, this is the same kind of notebook that I that I wrote on when I traveled last time. I really liked using the blank pages because I could draw or write or uh, paste a photo or something like that in here. And I had a lot of different options as far as layout goes. So that's nice. So that's completely empty because that's gonna be filled with journaling. And then in here, I have a traveler's notebook plastic um, 
zip pocket. So in the zip pocket, I have a little plastic ruler here that sometimes I like to use to draw straight lines to create some sort of composition. I have a couple of A. Gallo um, watercolor sample cards in case I want to add that to my other watercolor that I'm planning on bringing. Uh, there is actually some watercolor in here, which I'll go into, but, um, and then I have a larger watercolor palette that I plan to bring because basically I plan to watercolor every day when I am there. So this is the uh, little swatch sheet for the watercolor palette that I have in here, which I'll show you when I get there. And then this is a watercolor paper insert so this would not be my main watercolor notebook that I'm having for the trip, but this is to do like smaller studies and, and this is a notebook where I can be a little bit more messy about it. And I cannot remember where I got this notebook because it came with this cover or this was a cover that I picked. And then I believe that this is just sort of uh, standard watercolor paper. It's, it's not super high end cotton paper. Um, so I will have another cotton paper uh, watercolor sketchbook that I plan to use for the majority of my main sketches when I'm traveling. And I'll, I'll probably cover that in a separate video as well. So uh, we're coming up to the first fountain pen, so let's go ahead and talk about that. So both of these fountain pens, these are the ones that I plan to use for writing only. I'm going to be having a whole other setup that I use for watercolor, which again, I plan on doing in a separate video. So this is a Twisby Vac Mini. And this one I'm bringing because you can seal off the nib from the ink flow. So basically when you, oops, Let's go ahead and open it to actually get to the pen. And I'll explain why this has a different nib here in a second. Um, so if you screw the back end that way, there's a little plug here that lifts and ink can flow to the nib. But if you screw it all the way down, that closes this off. So all you have access to is the ink in the nib portion. And this is really great for uh, flying on an airplane so that your ink does not leak out of your pen. And even though the other pen that I have here is not a vac pen, it has a similar mechanism that does essentially the same thing. So this, uh, so I was really unhappy with my Twisby nib that I had on this vac mini. And so I just played around and, and got some of my nibs out and, and tried to see what nibs might fit in here. And this Franklin Kristoff medium steel nib actually fit perfectly with the uh, same Twisby feed that's that's in here. And it writes really, really well. Let me see if I can find a piece of paper here. Um, there's stuff on the back of that, but you will be able to see anyway. So how the Twisby back mini goes is you twist on the back, you twist on the um, cap so that you can have a normal sized pen but this just writes beautifully. This is a Birmingham ink. And I think it is the Ohio River color, which is a really, really pretty color. So this is really just a standard medium nib, but it it is tuned really well and is really super smooth. And I don't know if all uh, Frank, this is a size five Franklin Kristoff. I don't know if all size five Franklin Kristoff nibs will fit on Twisby's. This one just did. Um, I haven't done enough research to really know if that's sort of like a standard thing, but, uh, just know that, you know, there are some nibs that will fit on Twisby's. So, so that's that. And then in the back here, so this, this is the other side of that traveler's notebook zipper insert. And then here I have a pencil board in here. And then I also have some little um, double-sided stickers that I can put, you know, ephemera, ephemera or pictures. And then here I have a Loikstrom um, pen holder for that one so that I can have the extra pen. And then this is a uh, traveler's notebook, little canvas insert as well. This might've been a knockoff. I can't remember. Traveler's notebook makes these, but then there are also several um, knockoff companies that, that make them. If it's the knockoff, I probably bought it on Etsy. I don't have a lot in here yet, but in this zipper pocket, I have my new folio palette that I got from Art Toolkit. 
I, uh, I actually think that I am going to not go into this too much today because I do plan to do another video on this Art Toolkit Folio Palette. Here are the colors that I have in here. I'm just going to open it real quickly so you can see the setup. I've changed it a little bit from how it originally came, but I'm really excited to be able to use this. This, like I said, is going to be my secondary palette, sort of if I don't have um, enough room to take my larger palette or you know, spaces at a minimum <laughs> or something like that. And so then this notebook here in the back is what I'm using for my current planning for the trip. I'm not gonna show that because it does have some personally identifying information on the pages where I have been doing the planning. But this, I believe, is this just a, this might just be a traveler's notebook insert uh, with a grid. Um, and I like the grids a lot for planning because, um, again, then I can like, I can like draw little maps in here and have a grid to guide me and all that sort of thing. So basically what I have is I have an over, overview of every day of my trip. I, and then for each day, I have a, a separate two page spread for what's going on or options for that day. Um, in the back, I've listed some restaurants that I might want to try and I've already booked some of those. Um, so I've listed restaurants for all the different places. The next thing that I plan to do is um, go through the different sites that we want to see in each area so that I can put them on the relevant pages. Um, this is kind of how I plan most of my trips. I start with the basics, you know, airline tickets, car, hotel, um, places to stay, that sort of thing. Get those booked, figure out where you're going and all of that. Um, and then uh, I look in more detail into each each place that we're going so that I can uh, plan a little bit more. And I like to have lots of options because I don't want to lock myself into a particular itinerary. Um, if I do want to schedule a tour or something like that, I would do that uh, for a particular location. But um, if it's just sort of, you know, we're going to go and see this and this and this, if this and this and this is not open that day, I want to have some options uh, to be able to see other things. And I also want to factor in some rest time because I have found that vacations without rest time can end up being just as exhausting as going to work. So um, this is what I've learned for many different vacations where I got exhausted by the end of the vacation because it was I just wanted to see so many things and it was go, go, go. So that's one of the reasons why we also decided not to do the Ring Road Tour, which would have been interesting, but I think if we had had a little bit more time, it would have been better. We're staying for under two weeks. So, And then back here in this uh, secretarial pocket, I have... Uh, documentation related to the rental car. I have some information about plane tickets. Anything that requires something to be printed, I have folded it three folded it three ways. These are all like letter size, and then put it in the back here. Um, it does tend to stick up a little bit here, but I'm okay with that. That's another reason why I like this size though, because I can print things out on my printer, fold them in three, and put them in the back of this and then I have all the information I need for particular um, reservations or, or anything that I need to have printed is back here. And then during the trip, I will, you know, if I pick up various ephemera or whatever, I will put it in this little pocket. So I do like to leave some space that allows me to collect things as I go, which is always fun. And then the last thing here is this, ooh, it's kind of tight in here in this pen loop. And this is definitely a stretched out pen loop. I think the, the pen that I took with me on my last vacation was a Platinum 3776, which actually worked really well and didn't end up leaking at all, but, uh, and wrote beautifully as, as they do. But, uh, I just wanted to try some different stuff this time. So this one is one of my Opus 88s. This is the Opus 88 Picnic. And I just realized that both of these have smaller nibs. So both of these are sort of the gen the size five nibs. Um, so this is a dropper fill pen, but you can also seal off the ink from the nib. So here with this particular dropper fill pen, if you open up the back, you allow ink to go to the nib and then you have this. So this is, um, the ink here is Ackerman. S-B-R-E brown. And then I have a, uh, is this a broad cursive italic? Yeah. 
I think this is a broad cursive italic nib that I have on there. So that that is one of my favorite nibs for writing. So that I thought would be nice to have just to for longer writing sessions. And then if I just wanted to go with something standard, I would write with that one. So there's sort of the differences between those two. And also the inks are very different. So it's kind of nice to have some contrast. And I think that's about it. So this is kind of a tight fit in here, but it does fit. Um, and it's nice to have both of these pens here on the spine and then everything fits quite nicely. Once I have filled up this journal, this, this uh, notebook will end up being pretty chunky, but the nice thing about the Chic Sparrow narrow sizes is that they, they are quite generous. So you have quite a bit of room to expand, even if you've kind of chunked up the thing a lot already, because I have something on every string in here and I still have a little bit of room. Uh, part of the reason why this uh, journal will expand so much is because I'm going to be bringing a little photo printer so that I can include a photo of it. Last time I went and I really liked this this method of doing one at least one photo a day of uh, what you've done. I, I don't know. I, Iceland is so beautiful and there's so many different places to see that are very unique. Maybe I'll have more than one photo a day and then I would journal about the day. And um, then I've saved all of the um, materials and the journal. I only did one of these. So I'm assuming that I only need one of these again. I might bring an extra just in case, but um, it seemed to be plenty for a, a two week trip before. So we'll, we'll see, but, um, but that was really, really nice. And then when I came home, I had a really nice uh, documentation of my trip. And uh, I think the combination of journaling and doing the watercolors, because usually I would do the watercolors when I was out visiting somewhere and then in the evening or the next morning or something like that, I would journal and it was just so, so nice. And uh, that's what I'm hoping for again. And then I can just cart this around everywhere and I'll have everything I need, uh, including a watercolor palette and uh, watercolor paper. Although I don't have a, uh, I might put an extra travel watercolor brush in here <laughs> as well, just so that I can have everything contained and then I just need a water bottle. But uh, that's it, I think. If you have any questions about this setup or any questions about travel journaling, feel free to put that down below and I'll answer when I can. Um, feel free to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.